What's up, YouTube? It's Tanner with Built Not Bought. Thanks for watching. I wanted to share with you today uh, the largest table that I've ever made. I don't know if I'll ever have an opportunity like this again. It's a 14 foot live edge table and it's actually going into a local business in town that was started by uh, Rebecca Undum in my hometown of Oaks, North Dakota. It's right on Main Street. She completely renovated an old building there and the whole premise behind growing small towns is to, just as the name implies, support small business, local craftsmen uh, or artists. It's a place where you can have business meetings. It's, techno it's all tech savvy and set up for uh, guest speakers and that kind of thing. And it's absolutely beautiful. She's done a wonderful job with it. And I wanna give her a huge thank you for giving me such a great opportunity to build a table uh, for growing small towns. Uh, the table is currently being used to help display another local artist's uh, paintings, and we were actually just showcased on the local news uh, highlighting Rebecca and her accomplishments, uh, which was a real honor uh, for me and my family. But I'll get started on the build, and I want to thank you in advance for watching. I really appreciate it. So this white oak slab started off as one whole unit. Unfortunately, at 15 feet long and over 3 feet wide at the widest point, it was much too large for me to be able to flatten with my equipment. So we ended up ripping it down the middle and flattened both sides individually and then rejointed it together. And after gluing it up, it was hard to tell we ever ripped it. There was so much tension in this slab that I'm glad we actually ripped it down the middle to relieve some of that tension and prevent any cracking over time. The track saw left a pretty clean edge and I just cleaned it up with this electronic hand plane before marking my dominoes and gluing this thing together. And I spaced out my dominoes about one every foot for this build. I just wanted plenty of help with alignment because at 15 feet long, I knew this glue up was going to be a battle. I didn't bother filming the glue up for this build because I knew it was going to be stressful and I just wanted all of my focus on the actual slab itself. I didn't want to be distracted with cameras and dealing with getting different shots, but I was able to get it glued up nicely. You can see I staggered clamps on the top and bottom and I use every single clamp that I own for this. This is a perfect example of why you can never have enough clamps in the wood shop. Now onto the legs. The client provided me with four parts identical to this one here. They were a little bit rusty, so I used a wire brush and I cleaned up all the rust on all of them. And then I started to get my layout down. Now measuring these curves was difficult, so I ended up using a flexible ruler that you'll see right here, and it worked great for finding the center points of all four of these hoops. I marked the center point so that when I went to tack weld it, I knew I would have equal parts above and below that center line so that this table would be able to sit flush. I started tacking everything together with some solid beads to keep it relatively straight and flat, and then I progressed on to laying actual beads. Off camera, I ground all my beads flat on the faces of these curves, not because I didn't like the welds, but because I wanted a really clean look in the end. Up next, I ran equal length stretchers across the top and the bottom, held them together with clamps, and then tacked all those in place, uh, only to finish them all with solid beads in the end as well. And off camera, I welded up two rectangular end pieces out of rectangular tubing to cap off each end of this table base.
And back over to the wood slab, I use wood glue and then quickly sand it afterwards to fill and stabilize any cracks or crevices on this slab. I actually remove my dust collection hose when doing this because I want as much dust as possible because the dust created from the sander fills the crack to the exact color of the slab itself. This is a great trick for filling small cracks in any wood projects. And here's a shot after glue up of the two pieces joined together as one and like I mentioned earlier you can hardly even tell that there's a seam between the two. Up next is the dreaded sanding. I started with 80 grit, then went to 120, and then finished with 150. I have over 10 hours of sanding on this slab. But it was all worth it in the end when I started applying the Rubio and brought everything to life. I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. If you'd enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. It really helps my channel out, and I can't thank you enough to all those that have already subscribed and liked my videos. Thanks for watching. The combination of this highly figured white oak slab and Rubio Mono Coat's pure finish is a tough duo to beat. Everything really came to life, and here's a couple still shots of the grain after the finished product. Up next was the delivery of this monster table, and I think these photos give you a better idea of how big this slab actually was. I need to give a huge thank you to Jeremy, Tim, and Simon, uh, my great friends that helped me out with a lot of deliveries. Without them, there's no way we would have gotten this taken care of. Uh, we delivered it in two parts, the base first, and then we brought the slab in on top, and it's just mounted to the base with four threaded inserts from below. Growing Small Towns, Rebecca's uh, store was not quite finished yet, but they had events coming up shortly, so we wanted to get this in. Uh, they still had a little bit of work to do at this point in time, but shortly after this, we were invited back, and WDAY, our local news outlet in North Dakota, uh, showcased Rebecca and all the wonderful things she's doing for our community of Oaks and just North Dakota as a whole. And here are a couple great shots of the building completely finished. It's truly a beautiful place to display art and it's unlike anything else in the neighboring small towns. It's kind of like a, a slice of the big city in our own local town of Oaks, North Dakota. I want to say one more thank you to Rebecca Undum and Growing Small Towns for such a wonderful opportunity. Uh, I would have never had a chance to do anything like this uh, without you guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next build.